If you use Unreal Engine, this has probably happened to you. You finally finish your environment, everything is looking nice, and you think it's time now to get some global illumination. So you check your settings and you press build. So we just got back an hour later and you see that you messed up. Maybe the light maps are off or you wanna add some new objects. So you just make your changes, you press build, and then you have to wait another hour. This process I just showed you, you will repeat multiple times. So you bake and wait, bake and wait. And next thing you know, half your day is gone because of how slow the bakes are. Well, what if I tell you there's a way to make your bakes a hundred times faster? So your bakes will go from taking about two hours for a high quality build all the way down to just one minute. And this is all thanks to the GPU light mass which is taking our bakes, which was originally on the CPU, onto the GPU, which is a lot faster depending on your computer. So in this tutorial, we will go over how you can set up a GPU light mass. Now, real quickly, just in case if you don't know what baking is, it's when Unreal computes global illumination. Essentially what global illumination is, it's when light bounces around and illuminates dark areas. To better show what I mean, here is a scene without global illumination and here is a scene after a bake which gives us global illumination. So obviously this scene looks a lot better, it can make the difference between a good looking environment and a bad looking environment. If you're confused of what light mass or global illumination is, then I highly recommend you check out one of my Unreal Engine beginner tutorials. There we go over in more depth light mass and the different settings and just lighting in general. Now it's important to know that as of January 2021, ray tracing and the GPU light mass only works on Windows and NVIDIA cards, specifically RTX and some layer generation GTX cards. Now I know Unreal ray tracing is gonna be coming to AMD and Max in the future. So if you're in the future, maybe this tutorial will work for you you should go and check that out. So with all of this established, let's jump into the tutorial. Okay, so for the purpose of this tutorial, I made this really small room. As we can see, it's just a basic architectural visualization room. We have one window with some lights that are sprayed into it. And then we have some spotlights, a sun, that'll give us some nice lights right here and a lamp with a light in it and that's about it that's the lighting it's pretty simple if we scroll out here we can see that it's just a box now if you want this scene it's basically just a modified version of the arcviz interior so you get down the arcviz interior from learn and right here it's basically just a really good demonstration of unreal engine's ray tracing capabilities now, to activate GPU light mass, we need to go into settings, plugins, and find it. So let's just go GPU and click enable, but do not click on restart since we need to also activate ray tracing since GPU light mass uses ray tracing. So we're gonna go back here to project settings. And within product settings, we need to go all the way down to platforms, windows, and change default RHI to DirectX 12. Now we're gonna go into rendering right here, engine rendering, and we're gonna scroll down and this is optional, but I like to click it if we wanna see some progress bars. And you'll see what I mean in a bit, but I like to enable virtual texture support and scroll all the way down. Let's go ray tracing right here. So now that all three of those have been activated, we're gonna click on restart now. Okay, so now that the engine has restarted and all the shaders have compiled, we notice that our frame rate immediately takes a massive dip. And that's because Unreal activated a bunch of ray tracing features automatically when we enabled ray tracing. So let's go and turn off these ray tracing features real quickly. Eventually, I'll make a video that goes over them, but we don't need them for now. So we need to find our post process volume. And under ray trace global illumination we change final gather back to disabled reflections screen space and ambient occlusion 
ray trace and occlusion we could turn off. Okay, so now we're back to where we were. And our frame rate's back. So now that everything's here, we have a new window right here. If we click on it, GPU light mask. If you don't see this window, you can activate it by going under build, the little triangle, and clicking on GPU light mask. Here is our GPU light mask. To start, all you have to click is build lighting. So immediately we'll see that we get these really cool progress bars on each of these meshes. We're able to see the progress of the lighting in real time, which is just crazy cool. So we just sit here and it's oddly satisfying just watching all the rays hit these objects and the textures compiling. One thing we'll notice is that it says it's in slow mode right now. So if we want it to be fast, although this won't be as nice looking, we can hold down control and R, which will turn off real time and turn off just some of Unreal's rendering features, which will make the ray tracing a lot faster. Also, if for some reason control R isn't working, you can go down here to this little top left arrow, and there should be a button that says uh, to activate real time. So just click that. Okay, I just skipped ahead 30 seconds and this is the bake we get. It took one minute and we already have a bake that would probably take an hour to two hours if we were baking on the CPU. And this is the power of GPUs, especially modern GPUs like the RTX cards, which are specifically made for ray tracing, which is what we are doing right now. Now let's go over some of the differences between the GPU light mass and the CPU light mass that you need to know. Number one is that under world settings, all of our traditional light mass settings are specifically just for the CPU. So this will not affect our GPU bake. If you want to affect the GPU bake, you can play with the settings right here, which we will go over in just a bit. And number two, if we go into our light map resolutions, we'll see that the entire room is pretty red. That's because with GPU bakes, we want it to kind of be in the red zone or in between the yellow and red. While in traditional bakes, just leaving it at the green zone or the green to yellow zone would be okay. So just try to keep your light map resolutions pretty high. Okay, so just for example sake and to demonstrate my favorite feature besides the obvious speed benefit of the GPU light mass, is let's say with this couch this light map res is 64 or even something lower like 12. and then we start to build lighting you know we watch the progress bars rise up we watch all the lights ray tracing everywhere and then we notice that this specific mesh is really low the light map is way too low or maybe there's just some other issue or you didn't like something else well Instead of stopping the build and having to wait all over again for this progress to go up, we can just click on that mesh and in real time change the light map resolution. So we could change it from 12 to, let's say, back to 512. And it will start calcul recalculating only that object and the objects that surround it. So if we have a really large scene, this could be a huge time saver and we don't have to stop the GPU light mass every time we no notice an issue. Likewise, we can even move objects around and it will do the same thing in that it will recalculate only the objects that are near it. So this is just insanely cool. And this is a huge time saver where we can even work in our environment while our light mass is baking and we couldn't do this beforehand. Okay, so now it's finally on to what all these settings here mean. So I'm going to go pretty fast because these settings are bound to change in the future. So first off, we have the show progress bars. This is obvious as whether or not we want to see those bars when we're baking. But right below this, we have another great feature, which is full bake, which is set by default to bake what you see. Now, this is only going to bake the areas that our camera is looking at. So it's great if you want to preview a specific location without having to bake the rest of the scene. So I'm gonna set denoise to during interactive preview. And now, for example, let's say I just wanna bake this small corner right here with the pot and see how that will look. 
So I'm going to click on build lighting. And it is only rendering this screen right here. So this should take about 10 seconds. And yeah, so this is what the final scene will look like in this specific location. And the rest of the scene was not rendered, which is really cool. So I'm going to stop. And below that, we have a GI sample. So basically, the amount of rays we want to use. And right next to that, we have stationary light sam shadow samples. Basically, these are really self explanatory. If you want, you can just raise them up to get better bakes. Now, I've noticed that just leaving them as is is pretty good because of the denoiser, which is really accurate. But if you really want to get that, high fidelity bakes, then you can increase this as much as you want. Of course, the payoff would be that it, you would have a longer bake time, but at this point, might as well just wait an extra 10 minutes if you're gonna do a final render. And finally, at the very bottom, we have system, which is where we can allegedly speed up our bake times, although I've played around with it and I haven't really noticed any difference so far. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and you got something out of it. If you want, you can check out my other videos and it's just really good to finally get GPU light mass officially on Unreal Engine. A lot of us Unreal users have been using it for some years now, but it was an unofficial implementation. And to see how smart Epic Games is, they hired the person who made an unofficial GPU light mass and now he coded this GPU light mass. So they bring in all the best in the community and they bring them into the Epic Games Unreal Engine. And that's why I'm so excited for Unreal Engine 5. Stay tuned for a video on that later. Goodbye.